tribe, welcome to HDDC, HD Designs Crochet. I'm Heather, I'm 28 from the United Kingdom and this is my channel all about crochet, knitting and general yarny goodness. I've been a crocheter for the last seven or eight years, I've been a knitter for the last two years and I'm also a novice sewist. That was a little bit of a mouthful, a novice sewist and I'm just a general maker and creator. Um, creativity is my jam. So today my vlog is about the crochet and knitting industry and representation within that and sustainability. So if you're a returning viewer, hi, welcome back tribe. I'm so glad to spend this time with you. Thank you for all your comments and I hope you're all really well. And if you are a new viewer, hi, hello and welcome. Thank you for spending time with me and my tribe. I hope you like it and you want to come back. Just so you know, there isn't as much knitting and crochet content in this vlog as you would usually see. So if any of you are all just about the crochet and the knitting, head on back to my homepage and you will find the playlist for knitting and crochet and enjoy and have a good binge watch. So if you do want to stick around, which I hope you do, I just want to talk about our little creative community and the industry that revolves around it, or that we revolve around, I'm not sure. And a little thing called sustainability and a little thing called representation. So I think you will have all seen quite a lot on the news about what plastic's doing to our environment, um, the impact that we're having on our planet, the devastating impacts that climate change is having and that we need to act. And I think a lot of people for a long time have been aware that things need to change and that we can't continue the way we are. And there's a lot of people out there that have been making decisions for themselves in the background and I feel I'm one of those people, though I haven't been doing it for a long, long time. I would say in the last, I'm just watching a bumblebee outside. <laughs> in the last um, couple of years, I've definitely been more aware of my consumer habits and my consumption and all of the different things um, that I'm doing that will impact on the environment. And I think for me, um, part of it was down to finances, so I was looking at things that I could maybe reduce because I didn't need and it was unnecessary. Um, and then maybe for me, I started to look into um, more quality pieces of clothing so that I wouldn't have to keep buying because some of the high street brands you, that you'll purchase from, they're cheap and they're great. Well, you think they're great, but then you wash that item and then they don't really they don't fit anymore or they're faded or um, one time wear is not really what I want from my items. Um, I have definitely been one of those girls in the past that's gone to a high street shop and just gone on a binge buy and bought hundreds of pounds worth of clothes and then not really took stuff back because it doesn't fit because I can't be bothered because it was only like four pound and what's the point and when I was moving house, so when I moved out of my parents into my own house it was fine, I had loads of room um, and it didn't matter that I had loads of clothes hanging up. But then as the time went on in that house, because I had more space, I just decided I was gonna fill it. And so my spending habits were a little bit rubbish and I would just go in a shop and be like, I've had a bad day, I deserve, and I'm gonna buy. And then when it came to moving from that house to this house, I decided to have a massive um, like reduction, downsize, mass clear out because there was just too much stuff and it was making me stressed, stressed AF. And there was loads of clothes in there that had tags on that I'd never worn. And I had a huge triple wardrobe rammed full of clothes, but, and I don't know if any of you that are like this, I only live out of the clothes that I repeatedly wash. So I could live out of my washing piles and not touch what's in my wardrobe. So I started making bigger steps, um, reducing the clothing that I've got. And then once I got a housemate in this house, I swapped from the bigger room to the little room. And I went from a triple wardrobe, which didn't have that much in, to a single wardrobe. 
um, and I had a king size lift up bed that had all storage in it and then I went into a room that I don't have a bed frame, my mattress is just on the floor and then I've just got a chest of drawers and a wardrobe and a bookshelf. So yeah, that was a big reduction and I think when you've got less space you really um, value what you put in it. So my books are all up there because I'm a bookworm forever. Um, all of my knitting and crochet stuff is here, which again I will come on to. And then I've got my wardrobe and because space is a premium, I only want stuff that I wear regularly. Um, and then I, I got rid of a lot of clothes um, in you know responsible ways. I hate hearing that people send clothes to landfill. I think it's so wasteful. If you don't want it, gift it to someone else. Um, I took some of mine to cash for clothes where they pay you for clothes that you donate. Some of them went to charity shops, some I've given to family members. Um, some of it I've sort of altered or I've kept because I'm going to use it as a um, pattern for something I want to make. But anyway, what I'm basically saying is in the last year with everything going on in my lifestyle, the last two years, I have changed the way my habits are as a consumer. And I definitely think that's a big thing for a lot of people in our industry because we can create our own clothes and when we're creating our own clothes we want quality materials and we want things that are going to last because we spent a lot of time on them. Um, and then that started to spread out to other things that I buy um, and also watching things on Netflix, documentaries of garment workers and the conditions they work in. and yeah there's just so many factors but on Instagram slow fashion um slow fashion October are doing a series of prompts and I've actually put on Patreon um my first post about this because it's something that I feel really strongly about so slow fashion is where you um make more of a mindful or conscient conscientious <laughs> decision to buy or produce or create items that are ethically and morally sustainable um, that take care of all of the people in the chain so the cotton grower um, the garment worker you know all of those sorts of things and then they are taking care of the environment if you go and read some of the statistics on the fashion industry and what it's doing on our environment it's crazy like crazy sauce. Some of it I've only just started to realise, which is probably why this sounds a bit garbled and a little bit like, but there's just so much out there going on. Um, and so there's been, for me, quite a few things that I've wanted to do. I wanted to eliminate single use products, things that you use once and throw away because it's a waste of money and it's just going to landfill. So that's where my knitting and my crochet start to come in. For me, some of the things that I use once and throw away are makeup wipes. Um, and so I have made a set of face scrubbies. I think I showed you these back in May when I made them. And I just used some Drops Paris cotton. And I've made a set of face scrubbies like this that I can then, so I have one in the shower that I exfoliate with and then there's one that I can take my makeup off with and I do still have some makeup wipes left but that's just because I barely ever wear makeup um, but once they're gone I won't be buying any more or baby wipes or anything like that and then once they're dirty you just put them in the wash and then they come out and you use them again and once this is no longer usable because it's 100% cotton it can go in a compost bin which I want to get by the way the other thing that I've made are dishcloths. So, I've got a couple down here. I got some plain kitchen cotton from Boys in um, the UK. And I just did, I think I used a 5mm needle. And I just did some rows of knitting. And then I'm going to sew this together like so. And then that is a dishcloth. I'm already using one. I had one of those plastic handles with it sponge on but then I needed a new sponge and it meant that the other one was going to go in the bin I don't want to do that anymore so started using this and again 
it can just go in the washing machine and once you're done with it, um, it can go in the compost bin. And I'm also going to make some um, bigger body scrubs. So this is for my face. I want a body one, like face cloths and like a body exfoliator. So that is one way that I'm trying to be a bit more sustainable and also reduce my costs of living. So it's like a, a double bonus. Um, there are lots of free patterns out there and there's lots of designers that have got um, pattern collections. I'm more than happy to provide these patterns if anybody wants to know what I used. This I made up, the scrubby. I think I adapted a pattern out there. Um, I actually did two different colours. So if anybody wants those patterns, let me know. Another thing that I really want to make is um, market bags, so bags that I can put produce in um, because I don't want to be using plastic bags so I can put fruits, orange, bananas, all that sort of thing in there at the shop and bring them out with me. Um, and I'd also like to just generally start making more of my own clothes um, so that I know that where they've come from, what they've been made out of. I know that I've made them. I can source um, yarn and fabrics that are more sustainable um, and just reduce my footprint a little bit. Of course, I'm still going to be buying um, brand new for certain things. I really need a new winter coat. And I can't find one I like in the shop, so I'm actually looking on eBay at the moment. And there's loads of secondhand stuff on there. So if you do want to buy something, consider buying it second hand. Charity shops are great. I got some new yarn from a charity shop actually. Um, so yeah, charity shops are great. Then buying second hand. Um, if you are like me, you like books. There's gotta be some book lovers amongst us. Check out World of Books. I've just brought Harry Potter book five. I hate it when people do that. It's Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, the fifth Harry Potter book. I've just brought that in paperback because I have the entire collection in hardback first editions and I don't I don't want them to get mashed up. So I've just brought um, the fifth book second hand, it cost me like £2.75 free postage and they stop books going into landfill which is just a travesty. Who's putting books in the bin? Um, and again that means that I'm not buying anything that doesn't need to be produced um, you know, I'm all for new books, but there's so many books out there that people want to get rid of. So why not take on one of them rather than printing more? Just use what we have. Um, and then, as I said, buy secondhand. So have a look in charity shops. Um, you can always get some really good yarn. You can find cheap patterns. And I, in my bargain haul vlog, I did show you before that I, um, got some patterns from charity shops and some yarn um the yarn that i've recently picked up is this one i don't know if i showed you this or not but it's this cedar luxury mohair that's the tag and it's in this khaki green i got just under 200 grams for two pound fifty and that's going to be part of a beaded jumper. Um, and then if I do need new clothing items, rather than going to a shop, um, a high street shop, I am now choosing to buy second hand. So charity shops or eBay or any of those sorts of um, ones where you can sell your clothes. Um, partly because I'm selling a lot of my old trainers and things that I don't no longer want to perfectly um, acceptable items, great condition on there. So I'm just reusing that money to buy things that I've noticed I've got gaps in my wardrobe. And just because I want to make sure I'm buying from sustainable places. And until I know that, I don't want to buy from anywhere. I'm not sure if any of you are familiar with um, the buyer hierarchy that's going around. But it basically says um, buy is right at the top. If you have to, then buy. But if you can make, if you can 
um, reuse, if you can thrift, if you can swap, if you can borrow, then do it. We've got so many resources out there already. If we can use what's already in existence, then why not? Um, I'm not totally against buying brand new because obviously we need to sustain each other and we need um, to keep the market and the industry going. So there are loads of ethical um, companies out there. One of them is Gypsy Spirit and I want to buy a top from them at some point. They use um, organic cotton, which is different to normal cotton in that it's not genetically modified and it's not been harmful to the environment to create it. Um, there's loads of different brands out there, it's just becoming aware of them and it, this is all, although I've been on board for quite a while, it's also still quite new at the same time. Um, so yeah, anyone else with me on all of this or has got any, any tips to offer, then comment below, let me know what you think on it all. I just want to live in a really nice place and I don't want to damage our earth to the point where we can't can't habit it like where are we going to go next this is our home um yeah it just makes me sad and it makes me sad to think people are, are living in bad conditions um so just look at your own usage um simple things like i want to get a compost bin um i'm trying to reduce the amount of plastic i use if you've got plastic items that are in use that are fine then keep them don't throw them out keep using them but next time you go to get something and it's plastic, think, is there an alternative? Because once this one breaks, what am I going to do with it? It's going to go in landfill. Um, and then, can I buy it elsewhere? So can I buy it off eBay because somebody else wants to get rid of it? I've just brought this shirt from eBay. <laughs> it's really floral and it's like this autumn print. And it's still got the tag on it, so it should have been £12.99. And I think I paid £4 for it. So I'm going to put that in the wash, and I've got a new item for my wardrobe that I actually want to wear. Um, and the other thing I'm doing, as I said, is making my own clothes. So you've seen socks, you've seen jumpers, um, I'm working on my own sock patterns, my own clothing patterns. I've got a Christmas jumper I'm working on. And I started doing more sewing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, I went and did a sewing course uh, last Friday. Uh, I used an overlocker, guys. I'm <laughs> really proud of myself. I bought myself an overlocker back in June and I threaded it. And then I haven't used it because I've just not known what to make or where to start. And so my brother very kindly paid for a course so I think I'm going to pay him back, but yeah, he helped me out. He's paid for a course so that I could go and make a pair of gym leggings. And I went into the shop and I said, I've booked onto this course. I've never made any item of clothing for myself before. And they were like, okay, it's going to be a challenge, but you'll be fine. And I brought the um, fabric from there. So the shop is Crafty So and So in Leicester. The fabric I bought is just this stretchy kind of like lycra um material i washed it and it smells great um using eco that's another change i made my washing powder is eco friendly so it has no harmful chemicals um and no impact on the environment which is great because i have so many allergies that i don't i didn't realize how many chemicals were going into my clothes so i do all these things so it doesn't go into my food and then I'm wearing it and washing my clothes in it. So yeah, I've got the Eco range and my favorite is the Eco one from Tesco. It's really cheap and it smells so much better than the, the posher ones. And all the packaging is 100% recycled. They've used recycled materials to make it and then you can recycle it. <laughs> Pretty amazed by that. Um, so this is a material and yes, I went for an all black pair and I actually did the course all by myself. I was the only one booked on. And here's my gym leggings. They're creased because I've worn them to the gym and they need washing. Um, but I was there for, um, was I there for three hours? 
and I made my own pet gym leggings. I'm so proud of myself. So I would definitely will be buying more material to make another couple of pairs and then I have got a lot of store brought um a lot of store brought leggings um with various issues with regards to fitting or whether I like the material. So I'm really looking forward to being able to pick material that I like and make a wardrobe that fits me and is in colours and fabrics that I really really like so that's really I'm really looking forward to that and also the pattern which is their own pattern by the way and I'll put a picture of it up um can be modified and um you can use like a, a fleecy material and make some sleeping pajama bottoms out of it so I'm totally doing that so I got an all black pair I think I would probably change it a bit I want to make another pair ever so slightly longer and then um, with a, a slightly even larger waistband than, than this one. Um, it should be slightly bigger but I put them on the wrong way so we had to snip it down anyway. Um, yeah, I'm really pleased with them. Uh, I want to go back there and do learn to make the top a stretchy material top. And I'd like to do, they've got a um, six week course where you learn to make patterns to fit your own body. And I definitely want to do that because I just love the thought of having a wardrobe that every item you put on fits. There's none of this, oh I like it but the neck doesn't quite sit right. Or I like it but it rides up and gives me camel toe. Or there's going to be none of that because I'm making it myself. And all the materials and all the colours I can pick. So we all know that I love black. I try not to wear too much black on the podcast, which is why you see the same outfits again and again, because one, I don't have many, and two, I don't have that much colour. But my go-to colour is pretty much black. I love floral print. I love glitter. I love black. Other than my socks, my socks are always really bright. So, yes. I feel like I've just thrown that all at you, like well the planet's dying we've got to do everything and this is what I'm doing um but there is going to be a lot more of an emphasis on sustainability slow fashion and as you all know I am really really enjoying designing my own patterns and I really want to be like a knitwear and crochet designer though I already feel like I am one but I want to do that in a sustainable way um, um one of my goals as well more information for you my 30 before i'm 30 which is not this december next december i want to have a totally me made outfit possibly me made wardrobe um so to do that it's going to be a lot more sewing a lot more knitting a lot more crochet um one other thing is with regards to sustainability is having a lot of something can sometimes not be a good thing and I think you've all realised since I did my flash my stash I realised how much yarn I've got and it shouldn't just be sat there I should be using it um, and so I've really started to dig into that and use it up to complete projects so I'm really working on um, getting through some of the amazing sock yarn I've got using up some of this to make jumpers and clothing that I want to wear and if I don't want to wear it that it's practice and then I can give that item to other people. Um, and then the only other thing that I wanted to say about our um, little community is representation. Um, so I recently did a blog post for Annie at Yarn Plush Tastic um, which I'll link below and in that she did say why did you start one of the questions why did you start a youtube channel and i said because um my answer in a nutshell you should definitely go read it all is um and also thank you annie um it was so good i really really loved writing it and it's made me realize that i want to write more but anyway let's concentrate on this right now um I said that I started a YouTube channel because I wanted to connect to more people and although I go to a lot of groups in my local postcode, I was always the youngest and I was the only person of colour within those groups, which doesn't bother me in the slightest, 
but I did want to meet more people similar to me. Um, and so I then I had Instagram and I started to um, connect with other people, but there's only so much connection you can do through just a beautiful picture. And so I took to YouTube and that's how I found you guys. Um, and I have had people say that they have watched because they weren't expecting somebody of my colour to be vlogging about knitting or crochet because it's unusual or they just don't see it. Um, and then yesterday after Bible class I went into Tesco to pick up Darcy's dinner and I always always have to go look at the books just in case there's something there that I need to add to my list to buy um, or I just need to sniff new books because I love the smell and um, then I wander to the magazines. I always look at the knit and the crochet magazines. I don't buy them anymore because there's a lot down there that I haven't really used and if I am going to buy them I try and get them because there's a pattern that I want so that I can actually make some use of it rather than just buying for the sake of buying. Um, and there was two magazine covers that I was instantly like oh, and they are these. So, this was number one, it's knitting, it's in November 2019, it's got a black lady on the front and it says, black people do knit, and I looked at it and then I looked around like, <gasps> and then I picked it up and hugged it to me like, I gotta get it, and then I saw this one, it's still in the wrapper, I only got it last night, she's my colour, and wow, I'm so amazed and I did put it on my Instagram stories and I just wanted to touch on it because I don't want I just wanted to clarify why I am so appreciative of it um, and on my story I did put it was so cool to see somebody of my colour on a magazine of a hobby that I absolutely love and imagine if that was just an everyday occurrence and it wasn't unusual and it was just mainstream that would be amazing and I also put which is the bit that I really want to emphasize to me color race religion is not important but inclusion is and to see that I'm being represented in the hobby that I love is so so cool um I'm not really that keen I know there's a lot of hashtags out there like black girls knit and things like that I'm not that keen on them, one because I identify as dual heritage, so my mum's Scottish, my dad's Bayesian, British Bayesian, I'm both, so I'm dual, um, and I don't really call myself black, I'm just Heather, but then I do like the hashtag because it means that I can find other people of my colour that are knitting or crocheting, um, but I don't want people to use that hashtag and then it become exclusionary to other people because there's so many different races and so many different people out there that knit and crochet and in this magazine they've got um, a little interview and it's hashtag diverse and knitting which I really like and it's all about all of the diverse different people that knit and that crochet um, and so I'm really pleased with that. It's got Sock Matician, um, I think his name's, yeah, Nathan, who is um, a man that knits and he might possibly even be gay. Yeah, I think he is. And then you've got black women on there. You've got women from different countries. Um, and I had a look on that hashtag and it was great to find so many different people um, just to make this community even more colourful and just to include all of the different people out there because the more people that come in and do this craft the more amazing designs that are going to be out there because they've got their culture and their influences that are then going to be produced um well are going to be shown in whatever they produce so I just think that's really really cool um I sent a picture to my parents like She's the, my colour and she's on the magazine. And then it made me feel a bit sad that I was excited by that because it's not normal. But then I live in a place where you can't get colours, the plasters, the colour of my skin. So 
you know, and growing up, you didn't see um, models in magazines my colour, or you didn't see, um, you do more now, on like billboard posters, there wasn't a girl with an afro, and there wasn't um, on the front of books, girls that looked like me. So I, I'm just so pleased to see like more inclusion and more representation and that's why I love this community because everybody's welcome. As long as you are a kind and nice person, you're welcome. There's loads of designs in here that I want to try. Look at that. I think I'd do that in grey and pink or black and pink. And then I really, really like this shrug. Like really, really like it. So well done to knitting and inside crochet for the diversity and I can't wait to see more diverse people. I want to see like a man on the front of here and I want to see a gay couple on the front of here and I want to see a disabled user on the front of here and I just want it to be normal and we all be like, oh hey, there's a person doing their knitting thing. You know, that's what I want. So yeah, Blah. <laughs> I don't feel like I've shown you anything knitting or crochet really but that was just a lot of I love this community and these are the things that I'm trying to do and that I'm seeing coming out of it so I will be back next week with an actual knitting and crochet content vlog um, I today have recorded two at the same time I've done another one on my socks whips because this one is already half an hour long and that in itself was also half an hour so I've split them up so that you can see a more manageable length podcast. I don't know if you like that, I don't know if you like the shorter ones or the longer ones so let me know below. Um, I mean the pause button does exist so you can pause it and come back but maybe prefer to watch it all in one go. But I'm going to tidy up, I've got some appointments to go to and um, now I think I'm going to take myself to a coffee shop and just put my headphones in and journal and enjoy some me time and get an early night for the rest of the week. So I hope you have a really good week. Um, if you are um, on any social media then make sure you follow me and let me know that you found me through YouTube. Um, if you're using the diverse and nitty hashtag then let me know and let me know your story um, and thank you so much for watching happy making and I'll see you again soon